And what I've learned from researching them is that like there's a, um, I'm sorry to call out, I'm calling out the little boys in men that men haven't integrated, right? And for my own personal experience of what's important to have these retreats for myself is like, hey, I didn't get an initiation. Welcome back to another episode of the Corey Boutwell podcast, guys. And today we're going to be giving you a recap on the next level retreat. So we've just done our August 2024 retreat. It went from Friday till Sunday. It is now Monday. It has been one of the most transformational weekends, not only for myself and not only for my team, but definitely for the men who attended. We witnessed some in insane and incredible and beautiful and gorgeous and amazing and super masculine transformation for the guys that come out of the weekend and now they're kicking us and we get to watch them and hold them accountable to become the best version of themselves the guys made big claims big statements and they've already sent text messages they've already been making moves and we've already been hearing amazing things from the guys and we just want to let you know like give you some insight into what happened over the weekend in the retreat so that you guys may have an opportunity to grow in your day-to-day or perhaps even figure out, oh, maybe you're curious about coming to a retreat and see if our retreat might be good for you or if you want to go to some sort of different retreat. But regardless, we're going to run you through what the weekend looked like. So I've prepared some questions for the guys. I'm here with George. He's my right-hand man and the video director. What up? For- all of my content. <laughs> so if you guys have seen anything that's been really cool on the on my page, set the standing community page, it'll be all from George. I literally only just saw some of the reels like beforehand because he's been creating them and, and going ham on those and it's been so beautiful to see. Uh, big shout out to Clayton who also helped George film for the retreat and a huge shout out to Glenn. Glenn is not hearing this because he has no voice. <laughs> he is not talking. And then I want to give a huge shout out to Bo who used to work with us in the business administration and coaching section part of Set the Standard. And he came because we trust him and we love him to help with the guys, but also come to share his beautiful giving and cooking skills. So thank you so much, Bo, for coming, for coaching and supporting the guys and fill, filling our bellies and our hearts. More than welcome. <laughs> Bo's voice is also gone. <laughs> so you guys can listen to us sounding a little bit husky. I like to say a little bit sexy. So... The question I want to ask you guys, and I put this over to you guys, mm-hmm. and whoever feels called first just jumps right in. But the first question I prepared for this is: What is it about the next level retreat that happens that we all know that no one else knows? Um, it's a good question. Yeah. I feel like with the next level retreat, there's like a it's like this feeling that you have after it. And like after doing and facilitating three of them, um, it's like you only know if you go kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, and it's this feeling that gets created that you can only feel when you actually attend and you actually lean in and um, like you truly experience the next level. Um, so I, th- I guess like what we know that happens that no one else knows is, well, there are other people that know. There's all the past attendees. So if you're in that like, you know, that click or that like special um, like club of people that have attended the next level, then you know what it feels like to truly be like empowered and um, like trust yourself and trust your decisions and um, describe the feeling. It's just nuts. Like, (laughs) yeah, you can't, you can't really put a word on it. Like, and I'm sure you'll see like in some of the content that comes out and all the testimonials and um, I'm trying to like convey as much emotion as I can because it's so transformative and the power that you have after it is so like strong. Um, so I hope you get like a taste of what it feels like, but you can't truly experience what it's like unless you, unless you go, you know what I mean? I would label that emotion for me or inspiring is the, the feeling that I would try to describe. I don't know yours, but that's mine of like that post retreat feeling. What about you? What is it in the next level bow that, we know all the attendees have known that no one else would know. Mm. I think from a management perspective, like being in the know of what the attendees do, I think it's the journey. I, I love that we we go heart, mind, soul. <laughs> and it's in done in such a process that you can't jump straight into one without the other. And if you tried to do the end facilitate the end uh, activities before you've done like the heart stuff first you're not going to have the same breakthroughs so we go into the weekend already knowing that like the end goal 
Uh, and so you see the attendees and you're like, oh, this one's going to be good. And you see them go through that like flow as well, which is real powerful. It's also the process of like we encapsulate the hero's journey and everything and it's, it's working out actually at what part these guys are. We identify it and then once we've identified where they are, we know exactly where to activate. We know exactly where to push. I think because we've done the reps, we've done everything to best prepare ourselves in, in being able to help them and facilitate their own personal transformation or growth, which is epic. Yeah, so cool. Uh, I really rate what you said there. I, how I would explain like what we don't know, uh, what we know that other people wouldn't know is that the whole retreat is just an intensification of life. So whatever's happening in your world and your life like right now, it just intensifies everything in that and what happens is when life has you know intensification is like you get to see all the stuff that's floating below the surface it's sort of like you know if you have bad gut bacteria in your stomach and then you go on some sort of diet and then what happens is because you've been starving all the bacteria is the the little end end parts of the bacteria start poking their head out and that's when you have like a, a healing supplement or like an essential oil or something like that. And then it kills all the bacteria out. So that's essentially what we do at the next level. It's like you, you come there and we intensify everything. So all this, like all the bad bacteria and the good bacteria stick your head out and you can go, okay, I'm going to get rid of the bad bacteria and I want to make the good bacteria way better. And then you come out just like iron gut, like yeah. strong as hell. And everything, every challenge that happens in life every goal that you want to achieve every conversation that you want to have that's like on your heart or anything you want to do feels so much easier hey yeah like after you, I mean, yeah a hundred percent why is it healthy also, like how so i mean like you explaining the the kind of the the gut process to it in cleansing that you're making it healthier yeah you're making then diet you change the body from that is like you you come out of that weekend healthier than everyone else in your life yeah. Like you, you be, these guys go into, they step out of our world into their world and they are the light because they're so different mm. than when they went in. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and they're shining. And that's, the, that's their words, not ours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I still think it's crazy how we had um, at our second next level where Mr. Bushby was like, I'd done Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership membership. And he's like, and this weekend was better than the whole 100K investment or whatever it was. Yeah. Wow. We were just like, Wow. Yeah. Uh, what a testimonial. We um next question. I think it's cool. Who was a recognizable transformation and why? Obviously we think out going into too much detail because we <laughs> we can't share people's crazy personal experiences. Yeah. But I want to know who do you think was a recognizable transformation and why? And for the people obviously like listeners who don't know, just like explain that person a little bit. You don't have to use names either if you don't feel comfortable. Yeah. No, I know this person. Wouldn't mind okay. by sharing his name. <clears throat> but my, the person who I, I viewed being able to see just a great journey throughout his whole personal development like journey, I think, but on this weekend specifically was John. Mm. Um, John has been stepping like uh, foot forward, foot forward since day dot, starting with Set the Standard, starting coaching with you. Um, and then seeing him in that in this retreat, he went from like stepping to like leaps and bounds in different areas of his life, and and I think we we we've, we've made a reel out of just seeing one exercise that John went through, and you can really see John if you're watching this, you can actually see your heart and mind process throughout that reel, like that whole character arc is mm. in, is huge, and you can encapsulate the emotion. And everything you were feeling, that in itself is inspiring to people. Um, and like the way George, we were talking about this last night, and you said just the character of John is so strong, mm. and he's not just strong in his character, but he's just a strong guy as well. Yeah. I think he can hold so much, and he's realizing after a lifetime of being having to find that strength himself, he's fi he's found a community of people who who help make him as strong as he is. Mm, so true. I love that. One of the things that I really respected about John is some of the stuff that we do in the retreat is like confronting him. Like yes. you're in there and you're like, this is confronting and I can choose to lean in and get the most out of it. Um, 
aka Benji, leverage. How can I make these exercises better? One of our friends literally is like, every time he doesn't exercise, he figures out a way as a participant to make it better for him. And we're like, how did you do that? Like, yeah. Yeah. But there, some of them are really confronting. Some of them is like the most fun experience you've ever had. But it was really cool watching John at every step of the way go, I'm going to like take up space. I'm going to lean into this as like, I'm going to get like, I'm going to wring the tea towel out for every last piece of drop out of this. And it was like, you could see how his willingness to learn like that, help him have like such a, a big transformation and like, you know, open his heart and really be able to like, express himself and mm -hmm. feel like more comfortable to be himself and like really understand how powerful he is as a leader. You know, from the, the start of the retreat was like, John was already good. Yeah, like he was he was already like great, and now it feels like he's outstandingly excellent. Kind of, yeah, like, can't you can't word. think of like the superbly's for him. Yeah, it's like superb would be the word almost. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I noticed with John, and he's not my like you know, specific recognizable transformation, but I noticed with John, and I shared it with him that like I, I noticed that he would just feel all the emotions that everyone else was feeling because he's so like heart led. And he's, he's, he's so open already, like going into that weekend, like anytime anyone was sharing, anytime anyone was, you know, um, yeah, sharing like a positive or negative experience, he started to well up <laughs> and he was like feeling it with him. He wouldn't break eye contact. And I think for him, it was, um, it was kind of like, like you said, you know, it's an elevated version of life when you're at the next level, you know, we're at these crazy places, these incredible um, like settings and beautiful places in the world with all these amazing men around. And it's like, he he also like leveraged that situation to just get the most out of it. And I was just like, so like he was filled with so much pride and then looking at him just go through the weekend, you were like, oh, like I'm so proud of this guy just for one, traveling from New York for a whole week, just a weekend, yeah, like nonstop yes. traveling, being like jet lagged and just leaning in, not complaining, not, not wavering, like posting content every day. <laughs> like really just sharing his journey so he, he was he was crazy like it was it was just it was beautiful to watch yeah. oh yeah for sure who do you pick um this is your favorite the one who you saw the most you know? <clears throat> for me it would be curtis oh nice because i really felt him on the saturday night when we were doing the like the rage release and like someone like myself you know you go through through the stages of the next level and I remember the first time we had like the anger release night and it was just like almost overwhelming you know what I mean like everyone's gone through it and you're just like holding back tears the whole time because your body's in this like reactive state and your nervous system's so heightened and I really felt when Curtis first shared or when he first like went through the process of the anger release like I just felt his whole energy shift and like he said like he was trying to pick all these things that he was angry at and oh, where's all this rage? And then just before he went in, um, he was just like, oh, I'm angry at myself. And it was that was his huge takeaway. And he pretty much hasn't stopped talking about that. And then I just see how like happy and light he was at the end of the exercise. So it was just, it was so cool to watch, man. And like, we we're all like debriefing after the anger and, you know, everyone's a bit heavy. We listen to the, the sad songs and Curtis is just there like, I'm ready. Like, let's go. Like, <laughs> Mr. Worldwide, I'm ready to take over the world. It was just, it was really cool. And that was, you know, that was one night's worth of transformation for him. But throughout the whole weekend, again, he lent in with the 12 or so other men. And it was just, it's so cool to watch, man. Dude, Curtis has been on fire. <laughs> like mm. since like the whole Sunday, like today, like all the content that he's posting is just like, whoa, this momentum is like, oh, that's you at your natural state, bro. Yeah. Savage. Yeah. <laughs> like there's like a, a smile that people can have before they get to the next level. And then there's like a post next level retreat smile. And you know, when they were, when people are wearing that, you're like, oh yeah, like they've done the work mm. and they've realized something they've transformed. It's really cool. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. There's like obviously so many that I can choose. I loved like everyone's choice. Yes. fantastic the one that i saw the closest because um i think every time that i was facilitating the most rather than glenn he was like more most in my most of my view in my picture in my mindset was trent um mm. his was the one that i probably saw like the the craziest because i i related to him because he has like so much anger and because he's been in the standing community for such a long time like i know him so well uh, and I know like you know, all the dark stuff and whatever it is that's there. And you know, it feels like I know him personally because I know all the stories of his family and everything else. And to um, watch Trent go from like, he's like, oh, you know, I know I need to do this and I know that I need to get in here and I'm confused about this and I'm unsure about this and whatever it is. And just owning 
all of it and having like, you know, huge, I would say nervous system responses where there's just moments where like you, you, uh, you have such an emotional experience where you just like, you just got to lay on your own for a little while. Right. There's only the times you just have to space by yourself. Um, one thing I like about next level is it's so masculine. It's not like guys are, you know, for a retreat, I've seen some adverts of retreats and no shame on any other retreats, but like, like men, like holding hands and stuff like that. And that's just not for me. I'm like, I, I don't, I, I don't like, that. I like doing, you know, I like getting amped up. I like experiencing the depths of emotions. I like being brought up as well. Like I don't just want to go to, to hell and feel darkness. I want to feel joy and I feel alive and abundant and, and open up. And I think Trent got to experience all of those. Mm-hmm. But there was a moment just when I saw where if you're laying on your own after you've had a huge experience and your body just starts like shivering and moving around, it's that is your nervous system reconditioning and trauma leaves the body through your body shaking. So we could just witness trauma, like just in his own experience by himself, whatever it is, just things moving, he's just like, whoa, like, you know, it's intense. And we're just watching trauma leave his body. And it's not like to say that everyone has trauma, that some people don't have trauma and, you know, just feel lifted up the whole time. But it was just cool to know that you know, we facilitate something so powerful and so beautiful that we can physically watch, like the human body, like trauma just leaving it. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just so cool. And I could go there. I felt so comfortable as a facilitator with Trent. I'm, like, I'm going to push your limits. Like I'm going to push your fucking limits hard, like so hard. And, yeah. and we did. So yeah, especially during space jump as well. Like mm. insane and just, you know, on the verge of breakdown and just being like, no, do this, move here, do this, open up, bro. And him just being like, bro, just powerful as fuck. So, so cool. Yeah. Correct. So sick. What are the biggest takeaways and lessons that you think the guys received? The attendees, what do you think were like, you know, common thread and patterns? What do you think were the biggest takeaways and lessons that they received? Obviously everyone had, individual i think the biggest takeaway that the guys get from the next level is um learning that it's got nothing to do with anyone else but themselves so like any problem any ceiling any conflict any trauma anything like that it starts with you and that's like what we really like dig out throughout the process um so yeah i I i literally think it's as simple as that like that it's it's like the ultimate experience to learn to look inwards and see what you can work on and like be empowered in the fact that like you get to do the work and like you have all these challenges in front of you and you have this like to-do list of like non-negotiables afterwards that you're like okay this is going to make me the best version of myself i can see it so clearly because the first like day and a half of the retreat was so hectic and then you land back in your body on like the Saturday night and you're like, oh, okay. And you wake up and you're like, shit, I got all these ideas. I get to share it on a whiteboard with the lads and I get all this like crazy knowledge from everyone else and it's all for me and it gets to be for me. So I think that's like the biggest takeaway that anyone can have that you see a lot and that I've had just from facilitating them and like jumping in and out of exercises that it all just starts with you. And that's, that's what it's all about. It's not about us facilitators, location. It's all about you at the end of the day, so... Yeah, I'm going to echo on to what you said. I think the biggest takeaway is for the guys understanding that every single relationship that you have is like a mirror reflection. I know I'm saying that, but it's a difference between, you can go, oh yeah, every relationship's a mirror, yeah, but it's a difference between seeing it and knowing it. (laughs) And being like, oh, this person pisses me off because they're arrogant. I'm arrogant. Shit. You know what I mean? (laughs) Oh, I'm so angry at my partner because she's not doing enough. Oh, wait. I'm not doing enough. Oh, it's my responsibility. Everything is my responsibility. It always has and always will be. And it, my energy matters. I think one thing that we um, talked about, I think a lot of the guys got away with, like uh, got a lot away with, is the encapsulation piece of return on leadership. And it's like inspiration is an energy and you can use it. And if you're not investing into getting inspiration, then life can feel draining. Oh. Life can feel boring, right? And no matter how much discipline you have, give it, you know, one year, a couple months, 10 years, whatever it is, eventually you're gonna go, I am out of juice. Like, I'm out of it. It's like, okay, I can invest into my own inspiration. I can invest into, you know, changing my ideas and my mood and my attitude. And it's like, the, the work I like to use is, and, and, and one of the analogies I like to use, and I think the guys took a lot away with, is, you know, when you have a sore body part or like a muscle, or, you know, you're like, you're feeling like 
physically drained and cooked, you go get a massage, right? You get a massage, get your knots massaged out. Like, oh, that feels so nice, right in here. That feels so nice. I feel so nice, right? And, um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, cut that out. Okay. Make sure you're no, talking no. into the end of this as well. Cut that out. It's fine. My Asian accent is elite. I can speak. I can be to me. And right, so you can get like a really good massage, and you you feel better, <laughs> and you start to heal, and your fascia heals, and everything heals in your body. Regulate your nervous system, bro. Oh yeah. And um, you can uh, all right, and then you feel better. Your pain goes away, right? And you recover, and you may experience DOMS. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's a bit sore the next day, and whatever it is. And do you need a laugh, bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like both <laughs> containing yourself because it's funny. Um, but where we don't recognize emotionally and mentally when we need a massage is when we feel anxious, when we feel depressed, when we think we're not good enough, when we're trying to prove ourselves, when we know we've got more in the tank and we're like, why am I not get, have the things that I want to have yet? How come I don't have the energy energy to go and achieve what I want to achieve. And I just feel like, oh, I'd rather just go chill for a bit. Like, why, why is that emotion coming up? Mm. It's like, well, your massage for your body, for your mind and your heart is something like the next level. And you can go and do that and you come out and you will experience, sometimes we say to the guys, you experience doms after this. Some of you guys after the retreat aren't going to feel positive. You might have one of the most depressive days of your life afterwards. You know, and that's normal, right? That's like the comeback before the, the lift up. That's you experiencing you know, muscle pain after a hard workout and then your muscles come back stronger and bigger and you can push more weight. Mm. It's the same thing but with your heart and with your mind and how you can connect your heart and mind with your voice, right? Because yeah. then you can articulate it in a way which gives you so much power. That's what I think. Yeah. I'm probably going to have to piggyback off both of you. I think what, like my belief of What's the biggest takeaway? <laughs> what the biggest takeaway is, I think, is, <laughs> is your understanding that every single guy there, at some way or another, at some point, they're going to realise that their problems are because they blame people. And whether how much work they've done, no matter how much work they've done, they come and they're like, oh, in this particular area, this is their... F- Oh, actually, it's me. <laughs> and mm. everyone is so conditioned to blaming other people. The reason why I do this is because X, Y, and Z. At mm, the end of the day, your consciousness, like your the way in which you're operating is a direct reflection on how you see yourself. And if you see yourself at the mercy of somebody else's actions, then you're always going to be encapsulated by the ceiling of what they do and what they've done. When they realize they're blaming that person, it's so interesting through the throughout the space jump, throughout all leadership stuff, is when they open themselves up and they're like, actually, you know what? You did this, but thank you because it taught me this. Mm. They, yeah, are removing their blame and they're increasing their like thankfulness and their gratitude of that. that, that that's, that's what's happened. And I think that's like the biggest takeaway is no matter who you are, at some point in your life, you blame something on someone else. Right now, us three, if we thought about one aspect of our lives, we can verify and validate that because we blame someone. And at, at some point, it turns around and is like, you know what, that's not their fault. Well, the only reason that happens for me where I blame other people is because of you, bro. <laughs> I was going to piggyback seriously off that, though. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> And um, what I was going to say is, you know how you, well, you say blame and there's people that, um, yeah, you have those like dialogues. You could say it out loud. You, oh, this doesn't work because of this person or this is happening because I'm in this situation. But it doesn't even have to be the, the spoken ones. It can be all those internal conversations that you're having with yourself, the like constant reminder that you don't think's there. And that's what we highlight at the next level, I think so well, is that especially when it's either – you know, in some sort of release, whether it's like shame or anger or whatever's going on, it's like, again, full circle back. It's like, it's me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's my responsibility. And like this internal dialogue, it's almost like a, like I get frustrated because I'm like, man, this is like the, this is the pandemic. You know what I mean? Like this, this like internal dialogue of negativity and blame and everything like that, which I'm so like proud and, you know, I wear it. We all wear it on our sleeves of like, this is the work that we do to like try and reverse this. But I just wanted to, yeah. Like, yeah, good, good kind of point. reiterate your point, but then extend on it that it's, you know, it's the internal dialogue yeah. that matters so much. I want to echo on that because it's, 
there's one thing to go from negative internal dialogue to positive dialogue. And then at the next level treat, like it, it doesn't matter where you are, you can have positive dialogue. You're going to leave with extra positive dialogue. With the right things to say. With the, yeah. With Realistic the right dialogue. Yeah. Because yeah. you, once you're there, it's like all the feelings and all of the words and noises that you've gone into the back of your head come out and you can put articulation around them and then you catch them. It's like, oh, now I'm back in control because I've released control most of the time. That's what that's like. Which I think is fantastic. And I realized that uh, the space jump that we did this time was a grief release. We released grief. Crazy. Um, yeah, that's why that was so intense. That I was editing so hard and I missed all of the space jump this time. Was, I was like, was damn, hectic. bro. Yeah, that was like, yeah. It you was, could feel the energy. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, it was hectic. It was a grief S release. Sick. Next question. What were the biggest takeaways in the land of the plane you received? Hit us with a land the plane, bow. Damn. Um, that I received this time. <laughs> wait, wait, you go, you go. So no, I just saw Bo laughing and I was laughing. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, my biggest takeaway as like the videographer, director, so to speak, I th this time was, I think that it was like a worthiness for me. Like that was my thing because like coming into like the, the couple of weeks before me and you were having like some hectic conversations, I was like, man, nothing's working for me. Like all this content and I put it through the filter of George, it's shit. Rah, rah. I was getting all kind of down on myself. And then, you know, two weeks after we're in the middle of Byron Bay at this crazy place with this amazing equipment, with these amazing people having this like opportunity to just like be the best version of myself. And I was like, hell yeah, like I'm worthy of this. Like we worked so hard and it was just like the... It was just like good to reach like a little mountain peak just in our process of this like crazy journey that we're on. And I was like, man, we're so worthy of this. And like, I'd get out of the cottage and just take like a deep breath, look around, see the ocean, see this crazy like $10 million plus building. And I'm like, what? This is so sick. And like, hell yeah, we earned this shit. And that was, that was really cool. So I was like, I feel worthy. That was my biggest takeaway. And I'm just like taking that into everything. So that was good. Thanks, man. I don't know how I can follow that. I'm going to follow it. but <laughs> Please do. Yeah, I, I think you were like, how am I worthy? For me, it was like, why am I here? I think that was my, my biggest thing. A, a few weeks ago being asked to come in and cook, I was like, I, I'm, a, I'm a great cook. Um, but what, 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 is the, what is the ambition behind wanting me to, like for me wanting to come? And the whole time I knew... Hey, look, let's hold space. We're doing this for them. This is for the guys' growth. We're standing around at the end of the Sunday and literally looking every single man in the face, you realise this is why, I, why I'm here. Like seeing, we, we remember, uh, I remember seeing this one guy sitting in the middle of the circle and Corey says, Zane, your face has completely changed. Like it's unrecognizable from when you when you started, and I was like, "Oh, these are the this is the work we're doing. This is why I'm here." And for me, I can come and I can cook. I don't need validation in that. I don't need validation in the work that I do either. But internally, for myself, that inner dialogue that we that we talk about, for me, looking around that circle, singing a song together, I'm like, you know what? This is why I'm here. So you feel inspiration. Yeah, the main thing that why you your biggest takeaway was. You get to feel inspired and yeah. you feel inspired. Yeah. So yeah. cool, man. I love that. That's cool. How about you, bro? Mine is a selfish takeaway. It was just like, uh, like my personal takeaway was like, look how big my muscles are for helping people grow. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. That was sort of like, I was like, oh, I, I don't, I don't just, <laughs> how do I put this in a sentence? However I, I can flex like a beast in the gym, which is cool because I've built like the body for that. And I can flex like a beast in personal growth for people. Like I feel like Glenn and myself were just in flow the whole weekend and Glenn from like pretty much, I'd say Saturday, 10 a.m. was just in like God mode mm. for, for coaching. Like everything that he's saying was just like landing. He was like seeing people in a way that had never been seen before, holding space for people. I can see why he's tired today. Like he was absolutely mm. crushing. That was so cool to see. And just being able to, for me, because usually I'm like a bit of a control freak. I go up in the center, I have to talk, I don't have to do anything, blah, blah, blah. So just being able to like, you know, allow that, you know, it's not even, it's not even allow that. It's kind of like, you know, 
not be the one that's trying to be at the front all the time and not trying to have my point like get across and it was like I can just facilitate this insane experience and then when I want to say something or I want to help someone here or um, I want to help in, a, in some other way shape or form I can allow that to happen without any ego like just no ego I feel like for myself the whole weekend there was just no ego there whatsoever even when like in my personal life there's some crazy shit going on and it's like look at what I can do Yeah. even when there's crazy shit going on in my life here so like my biggest takeaway was like honestly if I put it in a short sentence it's like the more work you do, the more retreats you go to, it's like the more powerful you become. Like it really is. Yeah. And whatever me- muscle that you flex, like the more you flex it, the, the stronger it gets. And knowing that like facilitating is a muscle, communication is a muscle, the emotions that you feel are a muscle, your mindset is mm. a muscle, like your heart is a muscle. Like it's all just muscle. Like giving, a, 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 giving someone a compliment is a muscle. Receiving from mm. someone is a muscle. So the whole weekend was just, we just flexing. Wins on wins. Wins on wins, baby. 36 or 37, let's go. Oh, yeah. I mean, and the reason why I think it works so well is we literally have the four main like archetypes within the team that we work together. If Glenn's a magician, George is the warrior, you're the king and I'm the lover. And so we literally... <laughs> I'll take it. We literally make the entire thing work. And, and no matter what a person, like a man is feeling at the retreat, there is one of us able to, to come alongside and guide however mm. we can. We are a great team. We are. We are really good I received a really cool compliment from um, Benny Lowe on the last day. He's like, oh, like I've talked to you heaps on like the content calls within the community and I've only met you through Zoom and stuff. And he's just like, you're really calm and you're really centered. And I was just like, <laughs> thanks, man. It was so good to receive that compliment. Bro. It. Yeah, it was really, <laughs> really cool. And to then see how tall Ben was in real life, I was like, what the hell, man? Everyone's so tall. You met Zane. I'm like, hey, bro. <laughs> Crazy Seven foot seven Yeah Zane foot seven <laughs> Yeah Ben is Ben is absolutely stunned He was another highlight Oh man He was on fire The whole weekend oh, There's oh, a man. reason He's in the content a lot Because it was like I can't not Have the camera on him He wanted to have an experience And he knew he wanted an experience And he's like I'm gonna get that experience Exactly And he got it Exactly <laughs> He got that Yeah yeah He got that experience we had some, On the last night We had some conversations And it was just It was so deep And so beautiful And I was like Ben I just respect you, hey. Yeah, yeah. And your growth was like, it's so recognizable, hey. Like, Crazy. just the acknowledgement, even to like before the retreat, the amount of growth. I'm like, bro, you have done work, bro. Like, mm. you deserve mm. everything that's coming for you, like yeah. in, the, in the best way. Last question. And we'll, we'll try to do some land planings. Why are the next level retreats, like the weekend that we just had, so important? Why are they important? For me, uh, with, when it comes to a weekend like this, if a man can see the opportunity to come to something and think that they've developed enough, then they're stubborn and arrogant. There is no one that can look at a situation, a retreat, an opportunity to, to grow themselves and think, oh, I'm not going to learn anything. Uh, <laughs> because even when you think that, you're stubborn and arrogant. and There's a bit of pride there as well. And an emotionally mature man will look at the opportunity and say, okay, I'm here in this situation for a reason. Everything's aligned this way. What can I learn? And if you're, if you're in the heart space to be able to learn something, then you will get something out of it right. and you will grow. From the moment it starts on the Friday to the moment you leave on the Sunday, you will experience growth. I literally learned this this morning that when you have a deep-rooted sense of not feeling good enough, the pendulum will swing the other way with arrogance and pride. So mm. the second, if you catch your own thought, like, oh, oh, it's like a, I don't need to do that. Or why would people go and do that? Or there's some sort of judgment or being like, oh, I'd kick ass and that is why I don't need to go. <laughs> or like, hell no, I don't need to do that. Whatever it is. Or I can't afford that. Or I don't have the time for that bullshit. Oh, I'm too busy in the weekend. All those guys just hanging out. It's like immediately it's like you don't feel good enough about yourself and your self-worth is down. And if you swallowed the bit of pill and the bit of truth that, there is a part of you that's not good enough and you came for something transformational. Maybe your relationship would be 10 times better. Maybe your girl wouldn't leave you. Maybe you wouldn't be off your girl. Maybe your business would be doing 10x the revenue that it's currently doing. You know what I mean? Maybe you'd have that six pack that you've always wanted. You know what I mean? Like that you've been trying to get for like 20 years. You know what I mean? And you self-sabotage with food, whatever. It's like, yes, yeah. what you're saying just landed for me, bro. So thanks for saying that. You're welcome. Anything else? No, I'm done. No, I'm done.
Can you repeat repeat the question? Repeat. Repeat the question, please, bro. I want to drink a strawberry milk. Um, I have to edit this so hard, eh? <laughs> nah, leave just most of it in, bro. Except the sniffs. Please leave. Guys, I have... Comments. Actually, I'm going to leave only the sniffs in. <laughs> this is a sniff podcast, bro. You know what I think? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. We got the next part. Why are the next level retreats like this weekend, that w- the weekend that we just had, so important? <laughs> Do you like the way how I said important? Yeah, I did. A- articulated it's because T on the end of the tip. I think it's because that's an influence that I have. When I'm jovial, I will say words like that. Like important. <laughs> like that. <laughs> jovial means strawberry me. When I'm being filled with like joy, being like funny. Jovial. Is that what it means? Like a jester is jovial. Okay. Jovial. Yeah. Jovial. Got it. Bro, stop controlling this, bro. Sorry, I just want to see a beautiful face. Thank you. Um, weekends like the next level are important because hmm, I don't know whose quote I'm stealing, but it's like the the life that you want is in the work that you're avoiding, and the next level pretty much encompasses all the work that you're avoiding, whether it's all those stories that you're telling yourself that, you know, oh, this isn't for me or I'm not like that or I, you know, oh, that's not how my brain works. All those, all those little dialogues, all those little like lies that you're telling yourself, like that's, that's the barrier to the best version of yourself and it's the thing that's holding all that work that you're avoiding. Um, so like weekends like this are just like perfect, almost like circuit breakers to the normality of your life. Like the... <laughs> Sorry, circuit breaker. You're like a meerkat, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I think fun, no, no, no. Yeah, no, 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 no. This is funny because I can tell how f- much fun Corey's having because he's he hasn't done a podcast with someone for a while, especially us. And you're just having fun. And I'm you, having. You, I'm genuinely. He's like a little boy. Has just a wow time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, a circuit breaker to the normality of like your schedule, the conversations that you're having, all the bullshit that you're telling yourself. Like these weekends are just perfect to. Yeah, really highlight all the stuff that you're avoiding and the best version of you is hidden behind that. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> so this <laughs> can't be real. So bro. you have no idea. My nose. My, my nose is looking, bro. <laughs> my nose always like <laughs> 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 right. yeah. We're always there. We're always there. It's almost pumpkin strawberry milk right. time. <laughs> okay, guys, we're just... If you've heard us say strawberry milk during this podcast a lot, it's because we, there's a video. There's a meme. Um, a meme, and it's yeah. so funny. And it's We'll dude, link it in the show notes, yeah. probably. It's not right. It's just, it's just Japanese, guys. They were trying to learn how to say a sentence in... I want to drink strawberry milk. <laughs> yeah. So there's two Japanese guys, and one Japanese guy was trying to teach other Japanese guy how to speak with, like, a Western accent. <laughs> <laughs> His first attempt was, I want to drink a strawberry milk. And then the second guy was like, oh, see, see, change this around the language. He's like, I want to drink. And then they started nailing it. Yeah. And when and we were delusional so yesterday on the way back from the retreat, I said, I want to drink a strawberry milk. And we all just started losing it. We were crying, laughing for like 20 yeah, minutes, we're man. We trying to say, I want to drink a strawberry milk in every single way, shape, or form. And it was the best. It was so fun. It was so fun. So why are retreat weekends my, like the my like question next level? goes into I got I'm I'm gonna go a little bit deep on this one. Even though you guys are laughing, I'm just gonna hold the space. Why are you guys having a good hold time? the space? Hold right. Land the plane. <laughs> Let's go. I'm doing it all weekend, bro. I really like researching old school men's masculinity mentors, like Robert Bly's and the Joseph Campbells and the James Hillmans and the Michael Meads and the Robert Moores and the, the, the Eric Neumanns and the Carl Jungs and the Frederick Nietzsche's and the, and the Dostoevsky's. Like, they're all the people that I like to research stuff from. And what I've learned from researching them is that, like, there's a, um, I'm sorry to call out, I'm calling out the little boys in men that men haven't integrated, right? And for my own personal experience of what's important to have these retreats for myself is like, hey, I didn't get an initiation into becoming a man. You know what I mean? It was just work fucking hard, uh, get cheated on, go get drunk and pissed, like, you know, in the Western world, we have so much abundance. It's like, what else is there to do? You know what I mean? Like, purpose is hard to find because you, the whole world is your oyster. So, you know, for me, the, the weekends like this are so important. Is It is the ceremony to get rid of the immaturity in yourself and become more mature. Now, what you realize if you read a lot of Joseph Campbell's work and you know, Hero's Journey work of what's happened through all the different tribes throughout the history of the world 
is it's not just one initiation to become a man. There is so many initiations to become men. And now it's not like we're living in the tribal days where it's javelins and like spears and, you know, knives and you know, fires and teepees, right? We're in a different world of abundance. And we can, because we have so much amazing knowledge and we have these capacity for growth and these huge brains, we can facilitate retreats where you get everything all at once. And it's like, and depending on how regular the retreats like these happen, is you can have that experience multiple times and put yourself in the cage, in the ring, you know, into the unknown so that you can, you know, get into the gym so that you can, you know, build that version of yourself and become that man. Like, even just, like, Bose transformation. Oh, yeah. Insane. Like, insane. Joined, set the standard when it was overcome the chaos. Like, come, he's been at all the next levels and now look at you. Savage. It's like... I just want you to confirm this. Ask the question. Is like, do you think, like, without setting the standard and without going to all the next levels, that you'd be as powerful as you are now? There is no way that my life would look the same way if it wasn't for everything that we've done. I'm experiencing emotions. Right. You can experience them. Hard. I'm experiencing them. It's happening. Right. It's it cool. Yeah, it, it's just wild to know. It's like, and, and do you agree? As like someone who's participating in everything else, that like, you know. That each time it was like a, a new lesson in set the standard that you learn, or a conversation that you have, or a next level retreat that you went to, and then even learning like the skills of like, oh, no, out now I'm holding space for someone, now I'm mm. being the leader, now I'm in that position. That each one of those moments that you've had over the past couple of years has been an initiation to become a better man. Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't be able to show up in my business as a coach, or even in my family as a man, uh, the same way if I didn't. Do you feel the same as well? George? Oh, 100%, man. Right. It, it, 100%, yeah. You just become more powerful and more strong because you're going through the initiation process. Back in the day, it used to be walkabout if it was Aboriginal, like Aboriginals. Mm. Uh, when it was like Navajo cultures, they would do some pretty like crazy, like they'd have like the, they have these like these steam huts that they would have that have initiation with the elder men that they would do like there's a lot of i'm not sure with those but i know some cultures like they drag the, um, the boys away from the mums and the mums would have to actually put on like this whole um kerfuffle of being like oh no my son oh. and then the men would take them into a circle and all the men would cut their hands or like a part of their wrists and pour it into a bowl and then the boys would have to drink the blood from the men like we've got your back now not your mum and then when they come back the mum and the boy were not allowed to talk for like six months or something and you have to treat him like a man and call him by his first name not allowed to say my son and he had to call his mum by her first name and not mum because they figured that out that during those tribal days if they wanted a thriving tribe or a, a tribe not to die is like that was the necessary right of a man so that he would be able to hold his weight and provide because mm. if he didn't have that transformation they'd have to kill him they'd have to let that person go so if one of the kids became like a mummy's boy or you know, like whatever it is, or they become avoidant or aggressive or angry, like however you move through life, or, or, or needy, or always seeking approval. It's like, well, you wouldn't be able to help with the tribe. So they just kind of let them go and they die. And, you know, it'd be very traumatic for the whole tribe. So they have to have these initiations. And now we live in a world where that's not going to happen, but we all want to be the best version of ourselves, right? We all know there's this tank of potential that we, we, we have to realize because if we don't, we've just wasted our life and we won't be happy by the time we die. Mm -hmm. So, Having processes and um, ceremonies and initiations and experiences and retreats like like we facilitate give people that experience, and it's not just like you know, oh to become uh, you know a protector and provider like that's one part like to fit in with the tribe. We live in this beautiful world where it's just self expression. It's yep. like how creative can my ideas be? How big can I play? What what can I? How can I change my external reality? And what how can I? be in my internal reality and how can they play with each other you know and i i can observe it and just experience the best life yeah it's beautiful man yeah so if you want to come to the next level retreat click the link below and we'll see you guys there oh yeah thank you guys so we just put that one there but no seriously like it's one of the most transformational retreats and if you do feel called then clearly reach out mm. and if you learn anything from this podcast please give us a follow. Please share the podcast. And if you want to say anything to us, send me a DM and I'd love to chat with you about it and you can talk to George about it if you'd like to talk to George about it. 100%. Talk to Bo about it if you'd like to talk to Bo about it. So